Alright guys, I'm going to shoot this video here on how do I uh, rebuild my booster pump. Now you notice from my other videos, everything is quick disconnect. We have a plug here, pull it, the nose has a cam lock which I already took off. We got four bolts here, if you notice, the bolts are actually tack welded onto the frame so you don't have to hold them when you're going to screw it in from below or take it apart. And we have these quick discs, we have the unions here, which you have this thing out. Fully disconnected. Basically, pop it up a little bit with a little wedge in there. We're going to have to lift it. Our booster's out. Everything we took apart was by was hand, no tools except the base, of course. So now let's move on to rebuilding the sucker. All right, now if you notice, now that we got it out, like I said, no real necessary tools except your. Uh, your, your base here, which like I said, I tack welded the nuts on, so you don't have to hold them. Now here's our uh, pressure relief. We have the settings type here. Um, let's see if there was a heck of a name. Um, FJ, something, fitting, whatever it might be. No hose barbs, no nothing. So they're real easy to take apart. So you're not ruining or cutting a hose. Here. Now remember, we're not going to disturb any of this stuff here at all. So we're not going to have any. This is the only threaded fittings that we're disturbing. And these seal up to this type fitting. Now we're going to do that to that same thing again. Same thing from here. on first, take the strap tool, the rotation if you notice this arrow here means it's rotating this way so it's constantly locking so we're going to turn it the opposite, we're going to turn it that way to loosen up. at all. Loose. 
This portion here always is either huge or a good off. right there. Little sand side. Now, I gotta tell you a little bit about this situation here. This is a 10 gallon a minute, two horsepower booster. This stopped working on me after 20 some hours. And the reason why is go from new Someone did not install the shims correctly. So what did I do? I needed a I needed a pump. I was going to be down. This is 17 stage 10 gallon. That there is a 17 stage 5 gallon. I actually took the guts out of it and put it in this pump because I didn't want to disturb all this stuff here. And that was the easiest way. One thing is, see how these all spin freely? There's a little bit of slack in here. That's probably a little bit too much slack. Um, there's not enough spacers on the end, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. The reason why I say that is when you start building up scale on this, um, it starts to actually get tighter. Now I'm going to show you what happened to the other one. These are the parts here. Look at these rings. Basically what happened was, here you just take these and put them aside and throw them on your put the towel what happened was you notice this here these were rubbing together so hard that it surgically actually it's like a knife it just cut these right off and that was because when I got it someone had put all the shims on here and in the beginning stage, not in between the stages where they possibly needed them. I guess it was, you know, collapse on their part. Someone didn't know what they were doing. And it caused this pack here to be so tight. See, these here, let me explain how it works here. When this impeller goes against here, they're not supposed to rub hard against each other. Okay. This should touch this keep the perfect space in between there so they don't rub. Okay. Space between here and between this portion here. So this cup doesn't rub on this front or this diffuser here. If it pushes against it, it's going to cut off the ring. And you see how it cut off almost every ring on these here. Take yours apart, we'll never look this clean. I only had this thing for two.
two days just because I was waiting for parts. And these are. Let's see here. You can see where it says here. It says five gallon a minute. It's supposed to be ten gallon a minute. But 17 stage. These parts are interchangeable. Of course, you're not going to get the performance out of it. Best way to clean these, when you take them out, they're going to be completely nasty. Just get yourself a bucket, go 50-50 with F9 bark, and the bark works fabulous. you got to get here real good. Right in this area here, make sure it's clean with the F9 bark. And also your... Uh, make, sure, make sure they're totally clean. Make sure there's no coating at all on here of nothing. Make sure nice and shiny. Just got to remember, we're dealing with tolerances. So, Next, I'm going to show you how we basically put this together. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to put a still of the, uh, the instructions that I got right off the assembly plant at Gould's. The things that's sitting above the guy's bench, the guys who actually put these things together. Um, spoke to them, visited them. Kind of had an idea of how to, how to rebuild these the right way. There were so many other people doing it. I wasn't really sure. Um, so I uh, just gave my, got myself a little lesson. I'm going to show you that next. All right. Now that we got this here, the best way to do is go ahead and put your motor straight up and down. Like I was telling you. These instructions I'm going to show you are not my opinion. This actually came right from Ghouls. I apologize for the previous video of me tearing it down. It was in a GoPro and the sound quality was garbage. But I got this right from the bench. Shimming. Add up to four to six sims on the shaft until flushed to slightly rocks if achieved. Number 15. So right here they're showing you, before you put anything on, you got to put the spacers on. And slightly rocking is what they prefer than not rocking at all. Place first stage on shaft, evaluate rock with shim tool. Uh, encourage stage is flush to slightly rock. So instead of being flush or below flush, they encourage it to be slightly rocking. Now the reason why is because, see how these here are nice and shiny? I'm going to show you in a second here. All right. Now, see these cups here? See how shiny and clean they are? That's what you want. You want it to look like a piece of machine tool. Now let's grab our diffusers and our impellers. See here? This basically goes in like this. And this on top. Now, let's put another one together. If you do not have them shimmed properly, these will rub together and cause this lip to come off, just like what happened to mine originally. All right? Now, just put four or five shims, four to six, until it rocks. I'm going to put one, two, three on. Now I got my straight edge. You see here, it's not even hitting the shim, so we're not even at the height yet. Let's put another one on. So we're at four, right? Yes. Still, it's sliding right over the shim. She's not rocking yet. There's not enough on there. Okay. Let's put five on. Oh, it's starting to hit now. See, won't go. Now let's see here. I don't know if you can hear that, but we got a rock. Okay? Now we're ready for our first stage. Now I'm going to show you what happens now. Got to remember, this slides right over. Okay? Now, 
this is going to hit the shims that we just put in. So we're going to slide this down on top. Now, if we have it right, good way to check it. Push down real hard, and it's not hitting this cup. This cup we just put in. So it's not hitting that cup. Next, we're going to go ahead, put the diffuser on. We're going to put our next... We got the diffuser on now. Now we got to check for another shim. Okay. Sorry about the phone rocking here. Now I'm sliding this in. I don't know if you can see it, but it's sliding right over the black portion. That means we have to add another shim in. So let's add a shim. It's slightly hitting the shim now. Now let's go on top of the shim. We got a slight, a slight rock. That's exactly what they want. Okay. Put another cup on. Another impeller here. And we're pushing down on the impeller, and it's not hitting the cup. And the cup has got some... I'm pushing down on this. This is hitting the other shim. And see, we got some play. Now, you need that for any type of debris in the water, for when it gets heated up. When this starts getting all scaled up from SH or soaps, it's got to have some tolerance. Okay. Let's slide this down on top. Lock this in. Now it's hitting this here. Watch see here. Let me hold it down. We got a slight rock. Check it again. You want to hold, make sure you hold this down. Okay, I got a slight rock. So now I have this one put together. I'll slide this right down on top of it. Actually, I actually want to take this off. Because I want to push down on this. To feel if it's hitting the cup or not. Okay. I'm pushing down on, on this here because this is going to hit the other other uh, impeller. We got a slight, slight play there. Okay, let's put another diffuser on. Let's put another cup on. Pushing down on this. Spinning that, we're good. Puts us down. Now I'm pushing this across here. Let me raise the camera up so you can see it. That's hitting this here. Let me try one shim, see if I like the way it rocks. Now we got a rocky. We're gonna hold this down. I think that's rocking too much. Let's take the shim out. I can barely feel it rock. I can barely feel it rock. But if I slide this away from this and scrape it across the top, it hits. I can feel it hit hit the black portion right there. Let me see if I can turn the camera. See how, see how it's like hitting and then it's going on top? So that one's good there. Let's put another cup. Another impeller on here. We're going to push down on this. We're still good. Okay. I think I want to put a shim on this one. Hold these down. See, it's hitting. I'm going to go on top of the shim, and now we got it to rock. 
Put another cup down. Propeller, pushing down on the propeller. Pushing down as hard as I can, and all except this bottom one, it's not gonna do it because it's it hits here, but all, pushing down on here, all this is loose, except the bottom one. Because you gotta remember, what we're doing actually is, we drop it down, we're putting a shim here, and then this one comes out on top of it and touches it, okay? So these are what spins. This basically says stationary. That's why when these hit together, from this one and this one, we want to make sure we could push down and this will still be loose. If that makes sense. All right. Put the fuser on. Snap it in. Here. Here. And check. I don't feel any rocking, so I want to put another space red. We got rocking, perfect. Here. Here and so forth. So I'm going to do these and then we're going to come to the end. All right, now we have it all together. I actually have two shims left here on the end. Gonna pop our clip in. Make sure it's in. So the barrels were, I saved those, ordered new diffusers, new shims. The O rings for the barrel didn't come in, they were on back order. So this is what we look, look at now. See, I can push here as much as I can. And all the spins all right and now this here goes right on the end so that's what it looks like like I said here are the directions right from the company I'll give you a second to look at that you could pause it if you want But it's right from them. And we're ready to assemble. Now I already got some grease on here because if you notice, like I said, I just ran this thing for, for a day. So we're good. So we're going to slide the barrel over. Like I said, the barrel, all these pieces here, disassemble it, throw it in a bucket of F9, 50-50 with water. Get a little grease on the O-ring. Remember, it's reverse thread. Get the baby on there. Okay. Let me get this thing together and we'll drop it in. All right, now that we got the barrel on and the, and the nose piece, now we're gonna put our bypass hose. Remember these nice fittings? I didn't have to cut any hose clamps off, nothing. These are compression, so not gonna, we didn't disturb anything with Teflon tape on it. We didn't disturb anything here with any Teflon tape, any sealer, because this thing was never leaking before. It's not gonna leak again. So we're just gonna screw this on here. Besides cleaning this thing, you can have this thing rebuilt in an hour. Hour and a half, get it back in the truck and running again. The key is actually to have two of these, which I have another one on order. I'm going to build out exactly the same as this, so I can just drop it in. Well, let me tighten this up, and then we'll get it in the truck. All 
All right, now I dropped it in. Put these four bolts in. Remember, the trick was to tack weld these bolts on. So we have the whole motor wrench. Turn our lights on here. Gonna hook our banjo up. We're gonna screw these two unions in. Connect our control wire. And we're set. That's why if you think ahead, just like a race car, easy pull off, easy assembly. Nothing that uh that you're taking apart here to disturb any of the uh any of the seal ports. And we'll fire this thing up. Alright, now you gotta remember our whole system is dry now. So we have to purge the air out. And remember, we're gonna go over here to where we have our garden hose attachment hooked to this T, hooked to this check valve, so it doesn't go into the water supply. So they come up here to our SH. Uh, flush valve. Normally guys have a manual valve under proportion or whatever they might have. This one here is automatic. We're going to force water down through the SH line, through here, through here, down through here, and out the pump. So we're going to like kind of prime the pump. So let's turn it on. Let's turn the SH on. Now we're running it through this, this valve assembly. We don't want to run it dry. Plus, it's also a good way to check for leaks. All right, next we're going to fire it up. Now we, now we get all the air purged out, generators purring along. I wanted to show you guys something. Most mixing valve assemblies, when you have it turned down SH real low, it chokes it out. You get a dramatic change between full water and your SH. Now, I'm like at like a half a percent. And I'm going to show you. With this system here, I guess just the way I have my manifold, how well it flows, um, it all it all comes together as one. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to start it up and we'll hit the remote. Now this thing is like a gun. Shut the door. Now you see how it flies. Now I'm going to take my one hand here. I'm going to switch it and hit the SH. Now we're running it. Now we're running through the SH. And this thing is turned down a lot. I mean, look at this. That's running. Yeah, let's go through. Now, now we're SH is on. Not really choking it out at all. Now we're, we're turned down real low. Let me turn it up a little bit. See, I got no pressure drop. Let me hit it off. That's off. That's full water. That's SH. You heard a little bit of difference. That's good. Uh, let me choke it down more. Set. By the way, I'm not shooting SH on the dog. I have it in SH flush, so I'm calling fresh water. By the way, this is my tote system here. See, so we have a finished Thompson pump, chemical pump, coming through. Put a remote control and put it in my SH tank and go. But 
That's it.